about the spirit that was at the fireplace starting to light it, and you insisted that he left. He was going to get his baby. So continue from there. Well, yes, um, and um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I ran, I ran into the, that spirit at my fireplace. But, but again, I was very adamant that he that he leave my house, and like I said, he didn't give me any problems about it. He didn't protest at all. He just said, "I said I needed to leave. I need you to get out of my house." And he went. He, he said, "Okay." He got up grabbed what would look like several things including a little baby girl and he, and he left my house and from that point on I got a lot of experiences kind of like that like a lot of different you know when I when I would go to, out of body I would in that particular house I would always run into different people a lot of them Honestly, a lot of them just needed directions. Like they're trying to get somewhere like up the street that a, a, a street close by that while I was out of body, I, I for some reason I knew what they were talking about. I was like, oh, they, would, they would come to me and be like, you know, I'm trying to get to such and such street. Uh, I know it's near here, but I'm not quite sure where. And I, for some reason, I would go, oh yeah, that's uh, up the street one block and one over you know st stuff like that you know i would get a lot of experiences like that i would get a lot of people one night i got i had an experience like that uh a guy even knocked on our bedroom door and i got out of bed and i was out of body at the point i knew i was and I, you know i opened the door and i and of course me being me i tried to reach over for the light and of course i couldn't hit the light switch but then all of a sudden I felt the guy's hand slowly go on my shoulder, you know. And he's like, I just need to know how to get to such and such a place. And I was like, uh, all right, where do you need to go? Oh, yeah, that's up the street and down here and wherever <laughs> you go to. I would get a lot of stuff like that. And it really is. And then I would get a lot of people who are just randomly, I've got a body. And it got, it got to the point where I would, and there are several spirits around. It got to the point out. I, I just kind of had enough at one point. I was like, guys, listen, just I would just I was, just go home. <laughs> you know, I was just at that point. I, I remember what, at one point where I was really kind of fed up with it. You know, I was going out of body, and I was on my way out of the house. You know, and I was you know, to do my own thing. But on the way out, I saw these two really, uh, these two young boys. Um, they look like twins, you know, two young black boys, you know, just sitting near, or just kind of hanging out near the couch area. I'm like, I just look at, I would just look at them like, guys, go home. <laughs> you know? And then I left that situation and I just went off and did my own thing, you know. So when I'm out of body, I'm either you know, flying around, I'm either, you know, doing this or that, and, and, um, or, you know, I'm near my house, and I'm interacting with a spirit, but lately, um, so that was when I was about 28 or so, 29, I'm 32 now, and I still have a lot of out-of-body experiences, but I don't do it nearly as much as I used to, um, I mean, it still happens, but I, you know, and, and, I, and I know that people are around when I do it. I can hear their voices or I hear music or things like this, like I said before. And, and I even started reading, like, um, if you are interested, by the way, about out-of-body experiences, um, again, please check out on YouTube a guy called, uh, Ryan, uh, a guy named Ryan James Cropper. He will take you step-by-step step on well, how to do it, you know, things you might, things you might expect, uh, maybe you will run into, you know, run into other spirits, run into people, run into, you know, all these different experiences, you know, he not only goes step by step, he also has his own stories, and some of them are very amazing, and what I actually have been doing over the last year, I've been reading book after book uh, about, well, several things, 
um, but also astral projection. And that kind of led me to reading, reading uh, Robert Monroe's books, uh, Far Journeys and Journeys Out of the Body. Very good books. I definitely recommend those. And that's actually how I kind of put all of it into perspective and started because a lot of the techniques he uses to go out of body, I realize I've been doing, you know, like, you know, the way he lays down and, you know, and he kind of, he would explain what he calls it the rollout method. You know, when you get to that certain point where you're able to go out of body, it's like when you're laying down in bed and then you kind of roll you're on your back, you kind of roll over to your side or something like that. It's, it's like that, only your soul is literally rolling out of your body and things like that. And I realized that's what I had been doing for many years. And, uh, and other, and other things like he also has a lot of experiences, a lot of, um, I guess, uh, uh, lucid dreams and things like this about <laughs> funny enough, this is very random, by the way, he would dream about plane crashes all the time. You know, he's either in the plane or he's watching, a plane go down you know what I dream about that all the time I'm not usually sometimes I am but I'm not usually in the plane but I dream about plane crashes all the time I even had one you know, I don't know if it's yesterday morning or today this morning I had another dream about a plane crash and trying trying to get to it trying to help people get out of it or trying to get away from having to get on the plane that I know is going to go down or weird things like that. But you know, it's another thing. But I'm not really sure what that means yet. But uh, that <laughs> that's kind of funny that he had mentioned all the different kinds of experience that he has out of body, you know. And then there's, and there's of course, several, several more. And um, I'm trying to remember one more uh, that I just thought about before we came back online. Uh, <laughs> yeah, maybe I can't think of it right right this second. But, uh, you know, it, it's something that I've been doing for years. And I've also had several, of course, uh, lucid dreams. That's another thing maybe we can get into next time. But uh, it's it's been that, um, that ability, that, you know, thing has, you know, it's been with me ever since I was a little boy, you know. And, um, but one, I guess one thing that's taught me, you know, and that I'll always be grateful for is, uh, I'm not, how do I put it? It's taught me to not be, of course, when, after you start lucid, I, I'm, I'm sorry, after you start astral projecting, you know, your, your fear of, of dying, not that it was really prevalent thing in my life I, you know it, it just doesn't exist you know mm -hmm. the idea of dying to me is not a grim topic you know it's a very it's a very <laughs> you know transitioning thing for me you know uh, it's it's all energy for me you know we are pure positive energy you know the energy doesn't die it just moves on to a different form mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying the idea of dying and, and it's helped me even with the people that we've lost in life, you know, aunts and all, we've all lost people to, you know, whatever reason, cancer, car crashes, whatever the case may be. It, yes, I miss, of course, all my friends and family members I have lost in life, but I don't, is, I miss them, but I don't feel sorry for them. You know, they are, I know, I know that I know they're in a place of complete, well, bliss, really. Mm -hmm. I even, um, there's another story I can tell. Um, I lost a friend years ago. Actually, my cl whole class had a friend, a uh, classmate that we lost, actually took his own life. But before he died, every now and again, he would come visit me while I was working at J.C. JCPenney's. Um, I worked there for me, <laughs> for all of high school. I pretty much worked there. All my friends would come up and visit me. And, um, uh, and he did right before he died, and you know, right before he took his own life. And after that, I get a lot of visitations, you know, um, out of body or, well, now I just remembered this story I was going to tell later on. I'll get to that in a minute. But <laughs> I get a lot of visitations going out of body and, and uh, lucid dreaming and things like this. I got a visitation from my friend. He, 
I kind of looked at him and I was like, I knew that he had died, but he was like, you know, it's just like how we do in, in life. And he was like, hey man, what's going on? I was like, and I was like, you know, you know, he's like, you're not dead, are you? He just kind of looked at me and smiled. He's like, no, I'm good. In fact, he'd been better than he I'd ever seen him in life, you know. And he had a very troubled life. Um, I mean, obviously, it took his own life. And I've had a lot of experiences like that. I had experience like that with my grandmother, my mother's mom, and my grandmother, my dad's mom. Um, for instance, my dad's mother, she, during life, she, the only place she ever wanted to be was at her cabin uh in wisconsin you know in the north woods that's the place that she loved that's where her soul was that's where her, where her everything was and after she had died and she didn't she didn't exactly believe in an afterlife like i do but she didn't at all she didn't at all my mom can't even tell you but i had a visitation with her too as well after she died and she was at her cabin as she's always wanted it. During life, she'd always be working on her cabin. She'd always have every, she'd always have new things being built, like and, uh, adding on to the deck or putting a little stage out there because me and my brothers like to play guitar and play music and stuff. She'd just be adding on little things over time to make her place the way she really wanted. And so what I saw after she had passed away was her at her cabin at the way that she had always wanted it. That's, that's what I got from it. And I've had lots of um, experiences like that with loved ones. And it's, it, I have a very new outlook on, on um, the idea of death and losing loved ones. It's, not, it's never a very, I mean, I, I miss them, but it's never a very sad occasion for me because it's such um it uh, knowing <laughs> knowing what you know they knew now imagine what they know after they pass you know it's always been such a amazing idea to me you know because y y we are so much more than you know what we are here here on earth and what we what we remember you know um i finally started been I finally started looking for my spirit guide you know because of these out-of-body experiences I've also sometimes when I go out of body I call out to my spirit guide and I want to know well, one of them I think I have several I think we all have several and um, and, I, and I, I had an experience with one of my spirit guides once where and it was just <laughs> it was this kind of it was this kind of old, older, tall, you know, bald guy with a beard, white beard, you know, and he lived on top of this kind of mountain, like a like a monk, you know. We just climbed this mountain, and he was just telling me these things. And unfortunately, I can remember trying to hear what he was telling me, but for some reason, it, what what he was saying, just by the time it got to my ears, it was so distorted. I can't remember what it, what he had said, and I really wish I could have. But it, that was another very interesting experience. And, that, and I think that's just because, you know, the more you go out of body, the more you have these experiences, you know, the more you have to really allow yourself to really experience. You have to really allow yourself, let everything happen as it will. And if you try to fight against it in any way, it'll, it'll really become apparent, you know, in, during the experience. You know, things will just be like you might try to you might start blacking out or what have you. You might not be able to hear things right or see things right. You know, you just got to keep at it. You know, and like I said, check out Robert Monroe, his books. Check out Ryan James Cropper, you know, his techniques on how to do it. There's a and there's tons of other things out there you can do to uh, to help you with this. But uh, it's also kind of in all, all this all these things over the years have really kind of taught me or given me an idea of why I'm here, you know. Uh, you know, we all talk about all the time about, you know, our, our purpose. But, you know, but I think, I think what everybody needs to realize is our purpose isn't just one thing. 
it is so so many things you know i'm here for me personally i'm here to be a friend i'm here to be a husband i'm here to be a musician i'm here to teach i'm here to counsel i'm here to annoy people you know what i'm saying i'm here to i'm here to experience contrast i'm here for the I'm here for the good moments, you know, uh, just just as we all are. And uh, that's one thing we all need to realize, you know, it's not just one thing. We all here we are here for several different reasons and you chose them before you came here, you know. It's helped me put a lot of these things into perspective, you know. And uh yeah, any other questions? Well, first of all, thank you for taking your time out to come see me today and sit down and talk to our wonderful followers. They're awesome and, and really trying to take the opportunity to teach them through different medias via articles and videos and interviews like yours. So I hope we see you again on here. And Me too. Uh, if anyone has questions for Jordan about anything that he said, just make comments below the video and he himself will answer them. He's sure. part of 1111. So um, just get active, get asking questions and interact with him personally. We Absolutely. appreciate you being here today and we'll see you soon. Thanks guys.